I'm Abigail Pesta. I'm an editor at Newsweek and the Daily Beast, and I'm here with the amazing Sandra Uwiling Guiman, who just came off stage. She just introduced Angelina Jolie, and she didn't realize that she was going to do that. So that was a little Charlie Rose surprise. Were you ready for that? Oh my goodness, it was really scary. Uh, it was like, do you want to introduce Angelina for me? I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was really scary, but all good. Sandra is here tonight to tell her life story, which is a really phenomenal, profound, and tragic story that she has turned into really beautiful art. So I'm going to let Sandra tell her story, where you came from. You're here in, you live in Rochester, New York. You're a high school student. But tell me about your, about your past and about why you're here tonight. Um, I'm from the Congo. I was born and raised there, but I've never been really I've been accepted there. We were forced to leave the country and flee to Burundi. Uh, my family was part of a massacre. Well, we were attacked one night, and in the morning, everything, most of the things we loved and cherished were gone. My family was forced to start their lives from scratch, and uh, it's been a really terrible story that people keep telling over or they keep hearing me say it over and over. And finally, I just got really sick of it and wanted to kind of have the bright side to the story. The part where, you know, the hero comes in and we're able to live happily ever after. And I wanted to have my happily ever after. So that's when the, the pictures come in and they heal my heart like no one can really understand. Um, just seeing the strength that everyone in those pictures has just gives me courage to continue being me and continue living my life and not go down the wrong road really and you know I keep fighting for justice and speaking out for those who can't and working with Foundation of Hope Ministries. And these are photos, they're portraits every year on the anniversary of the massacre which was in August 2004 you meet with other survivors and that's when you started taking their portraits, right, at, all, at these meetings every year on the anniversary? Yes, because we would all gather and it was a time to just really hang out with people you haven't seen for a year and just connect and tell your stories because no one really knows how the other escaped. So we just tell our stories and cry together, laugh together, remember the good times and the bad times. So it's really just a great time to take pictures and catch them in those emotions. Um, you had a gun pointed at your own head during this massacre and you saw people getting shot and burned and slashed. I, you know, most people can't even imagine ever surviving something like that and you got through it. How do you, how do you get through it? Is this, does your art help you kind of work through that? I mean, what? How do you survive something like that? Well, just to begin, I have an incredible family filled with incredible people, and they've kind of been able to help me through it. And also, I have a much bigger family called Foundation of Hope Ministries. They've And your family founded this group, yeah, right? Yeah, we founded this group to help um, our fellow survivors who couldn't really help themselves a lot. And right. we would just do concerts and give the love donations to um, whoever needed it the most mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it started and it grew larger and now they're looking to build a school and really doing all of that just doing things out of love just makes my heart filled with joy and I couldn't really ask for a better healing process. It's a beautiful thing.